16 years. Jim Gelslider and his students from the University of North Florida surveyed southeastern Georgia and northeastern Florida waters for sharks, rays, and other related species in the region. Never once did they catch a glimpse of the elusive small-toothed sawfish. Just when they thought they had to look for other fish in the sea, a storm-tossed day in the St. Mary's River brought an unexpected surprise. A mighty tug on a student's line led to a face-to-saw encounter with a nearly 10-foot-long creature straight out of prehistoric times. Using the drum line they use for larger species, gel slider helped pull in the sawfish, its tooth line snout caught in the line. Ever wanted to wear a hedge trimmer for a nose? Me neither, but that's the sawfish for you. They are often called prehistoric since they've been around for millions of years. This ancient species belongs to the Elasmo branch group which includes rays, skates, and sharks. Unlike most fish, sawfish have no bones or skeletons. They are held together by cartilage, leading to quite a unique structure. Yet despite their tough guy looks, these gentle giants are more interested in snacking on fish, shrimp, and crabs than in causing a stir. Did you know sawfish almost saw their end? Years ago, you could find them cruising the coasts from Texas all the way to New York. But over the last century, their numbers took a nosedive. By the early 2000s, these incredible creatures were barely hanging on in a few pockets of southwest Florida. Sightings were almost exclusively limited to Florida. It's a sad tale of accidental catches and trophy hunting that nearly wiped out these creatures. In 1992, Florida decided enough was enough and put protections in place for the sawfish. But the real game-changer came in 2003 when the U.S. population of sawfish became the first native marine fish to make it onto the Endangered Species Act list. Recovery efforts have benefited greatly from the work of conservationists like Florida State University's Dean Grubbs. Saving a species takes a village, or in this case, a dedicated team of experts known as the Sawfish Recovery Team. These fine minds were assembled by NOAA's Office of Protected Resources and include scientists like Dean Grubbs and the fish-loving folks from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Their main aim is to craft effective plans and strategies that help create the bubbles of protection the sawfish population needs to keep swimming. Almost like the marine life X-Men. After two decades of hard work, the sawfish started showing signs of a comeback. Like underwater spies, Researchers tagged over 100 adult sawfish with acoustic transmitters that track their movements. Eventually, baby sawfish about two feet long at birth were spotted in Tampa Bay venturing up the East Coast. It seemed like the tide was finally turning for these toothy swimmers. But the tides turned fast. Sadly, a mysterious illness hit the sawfish population in 2023. This nasty bug caused a sea of insanity. Some marine animals started spinning around in the water, like underwater disco balls, amongst other weird behaviors. Since January this year, at least 54 sawfish have been confirmed dead from this toxic disease. Most of them were in the Florida Keys, but experts fear the true number of affected sawfish could be higher. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration states that in addition to the Bahamas, there are other places off the coast of Central America where smalltooth sawfish can be found. However, this marked a tough break for a species that was just getting back on its fins. The deadly disease has scientists scratching their heads. So far, the disease has been documented in multiple crab species and over 80 more fish species. Florida officials are working overtime with various groups to crack the case, trying to connect strings between anything from harmful algal blooms to potential toxins in the water. The only lead they have are that there is no evidence of a parasite or communicable pathogen, but biopsies, blood samples, and water samples are still being analyzed. Legislators in Florida have set aside funds to investigate the illness further to determine its cause and develop strategies to lessen the effects. We don't need any more fish spinning right round right round. In a first-of-a-kind operation, a team of researchers attempted to save an ailing 11-foot sawfish in the Florida Keys. They took it to a care facility run by Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium, hoping to nurse it back to health. Despite their best efforts over 20 days, 
The sawfish didn't make it. But here's where we come in. Scientists are calling on everyone, fishermen, boaters, beachgoers, and beach bodybuilders, to be their eyes and ears in the water. If you spot a sawfish, it's crucial to report it. As a seaside detective, remember the details. Take note of its size, where you saw it, the date, time, and water depth. Then, report your sightings online at sawfishrecovery.org or call 844-4-SAWFISH. If that's too out of your depth, you can email sawfish at myfwc.com. And if you're a fisher who accidentally hooks one, keep it in the water and release it as soon as possible. While most people want to help sawfish, there is always a bad apple or two. In 2019, a commercial fisherman in Jacksonville got caught red-handed trying to turn a sawfish into a souvenir. He severed the rostrum the saw-like snout of a live 12-foot sawfish using a power saw. Justice caught up to him quicker than a shark to Nemo as he faced probation, fines, and community service for his crime. Professor Jim Gelslider's field survey classes offer students a unique opportunity to conduct research on sharks and rays. Imagine being an undergraduate and coming face-to-face -face with one of the rarest fish in the sea. These hands-on experiences are invaluable for budding marine biologists and next-generation ocean protectors. While the recent disease outbreak is certainly a setback, it's not the end of the road for sawfish conservation. I think there's still more than a mere ray of hope for these amazing animals. As we learn more about the challenges they face, we can develop better strategies to ensure sawfish have their happy ending. Every action counts when it comes to protecting this endangered species. Whether you're reporting a sighting, spreading awareness, or simply being mindful of your impact on marine environments, you're playing a part in the sawfish's survival. Next time you're near the coast, remember, you might just be sharing the water with a living fossil. So continue to support or get involved with those who protect and study the small tooth sawfish. You may be the reason these unique creatures can once again thrive in Florida waters.